Okay, well, thanks everybody for coming. Um, I truly appreciate it. Um, what I wanted to do today is I want to talk about some price patterns and and more than, you know, maybe some candlestick patterns, but the importance of where a price pattern is placed. There is a big difference in having um, a candlestick pattern or a price pattern depending on where it is placed within the overall chart. And we spent an awful lot of time in Rightway Options um, this week doing some detailed look um, at price action. And um, if anyone was in that RWO class, I, I mean, if you got something out of it, just type a Y. Because it's important to me that I do, um, I share with you what works for me, okay? And there's no magic. Uh, that's awesome, guys. There's no magic in, in what I do. Um, it's just a focus, uh, a detailed focus to price action. And when I look at price patterns, um, I really feel like, and you guys will probably think I'm, you know, you probably already think I'm nutty as a fruitcake, but um, charts, I believe, are telling me a story, okay? They're talking to me. If I can read their language, if I can um, focus in on what the chart says, and if I can avoid what I want the chart to be, and read it for what it is. How many of you would agree that you've gotten yourself into trouble thinking the market should be one particular way and trying to trade that or prove to the market to your right rather than trading the chart that's actually in front of you, right? It's real easy and I've, and I've been caught up in this before too where, um, um, this mark, you know, this market shouldn't be up this much. There's no way this should be this way. Hey, Rick, no way should the market be up like this. And, and oh, the, all of this other, you know, stuff is just out of whack. And I believe that stuff too from time to time. But the mistake that I made in the past was I would let that affect the way I looked at the chart. Okay, I would let that influence how I traded. And I'm consistently and constantly warning people, you can have a belief system. You can, you can think that the world's about ready to drop off the edge. Okay, you can have that belief system, but still trade effectively in the market if you can remove that emotion when you look at the charts, okay? Now, I believe price patterns are extremely important. I know they're extremely important to me. And the placement of those price patterns is equally important to me. Um, I trade the way I trade not because, um, well, Rick knows this and, and, and um, we're different traders. Right, we do things a little bit differently. Oftentimes we'll look at a chart and we're both thinking the same thing. But then there's oftentimes we look at a chart and we're completely on a different page because I might like it and he thinks, Campbell, you're out of your ever loving mind here. What are you thinking about? Okay, and, and that's okay because we all have to define who we are as a trader. Okay, and I think one of the big problems that traders deal with all the time is they don't know who they are as a trader. Would you guys in right way options say that I am I'm very strict and disciplined to my set of rules? And it doesn't matter if Rick mates a trade and it doesn't matter if Warren Buffett tells me this is the great thing. It doesn't matter um, 
you know, I don't care if chaos is erupting in the world and I should be short. If the chart doesn't show me the pattern that I want to trade, I don't trade it. It really is that simple to me. And I try to remove all of those things that I, that I, um, that can affect my look at the chart. Because remember, if the chart is telling us a story, we can't read our own impression into it. We can't jump ahead and say, this has to happen or this should happen. In fact, it's really, it's really um, a disservice to you thinking that we can predict what happens next. The best we can do with the chart is control our entry into the trade. And so I'm very strict about my entries into the trade. And you guys know a couple of patterns that are extremely important to me that I trade all the time are the PBO, the pullback opportunity, where stock is moving in a trend. That's critical, must be in a trend. I want it to be moving with the overall direction of the market. I don't trade stocks that are moving opposite of the market. Um, I mean, rarely do I counter trend trade. I mean, it would be extremely rare. I want to trade with the direction of the market. I want to trade a trending stock and the PBO is the stock pulls back and proves that it's going to hold trend. Okay. If it can combine a price action move, if there is a price support over here that adds to that trade, that becomes an even better position. Price support and trend. Okay. Now you guys, and there's probably frustrated people in here with me because they will bring up a chart. They'll bring up a chart and the price action has fallen below there, but there's a bull signal here. There's buyer stepping in. How often do you guys see me trade those? <laughs> For me, I don't care. I don't care. Unless it's my price pattern, my trade, I don't trade it. Because here's what I know, guys, and I proved this with when we did this the other day, we, we actually went day by day through X. And isn't it true, guys, that this trade may not set up for you here, but if we just wait in this trend, the next trade may be the better trade the lower risk entry into the position, the better position. And isn't it true, we're constantly getting caught up in this idea that I'm here and I'm here in front of a computer, I have to buy something today. And that's not correct. In my opinion, you are risking your livelihood with that attitude. Okay. So, <laughs> free money Biden is looking for a freebie ter trade. Don't make me work for it, just give me a trade. Is that what you're asking there? The way I find my trades is very, very simple, guys. And I've shown this over and over and over. I am looking for trades that are setting up, not those that have already occurred. And that's one of the major differences between me and I think what a lot of people do in trading. Okay, because isn't it true? How many of you would look at this chart right here? And oh my gosh, I got to hurry up and buy that. I've been searching for that white candle all day. There it is. Now I jump on it. That's not me. I will not trade that. I will never trade that. To me, that is a chase in the trade. The only way I would have entered this position is if I had seen this pattern setting up and I had made that trade come to me where I could get a low risk entry into the trade 
and I'm not chasing. And that's the major difference in what I do. It's one of the major differences I think that keeps me on the winning side of trades most of the time because I don't chase anything. I make the trade, do what I want it to do, or it's not a trade, okay? Now, the majority of my trades, and folks in RWO will tell you this, are all the same. It's either the PBO in a trend, pullback opportunity, buyer stepping up, or it's a stock that's trending and the stock is consolidated over and we're engaging trend. Okay, almost all of my trades are that. Would you guys agree? In RWO, I don't do much anything else. It's the same thing over and over and over again. And there's more than enough opportunities to trade. Okay, but I'm the guy that's looking at charts, looking for the trade that could be coming. I've mentioned KSS a couple of times today. Do you guys see my potential patterns and the patterns that I've marked out here on this chart? I'm looking for a chart trending. I'm looking for a chart holding price support and trend, and I'm looking for it before the trade actually occurs. I'm looking at the setup rather than chasing this, the big move. Okay? And I think there's a key element in that that's important. First off, you have to recognize the fact that I do what I say I do. Um, I, I lose on trades just like everyone else, guys. Some patterns fail. But it's always the same trade setups. It's always the same pattern setups that I trade. Okay? I don't... Um, I really don't change much of anything, and it doesn't matter, um, RWO folks can tell you, it doesn't matter if it's a five minute chart, a daily chart, or a weekly chart, it's the exact same pattern. Every time, every day, okay? So trend is important to me, support is important to me, and I like to have trades with concise price action. And what I mean by concise price action, I wanna see that chart in a relatively concise pattern. I've traded, I traded um, um, Intel here. Can anyone look at that chart and tell me that's concise price action? It's a mess. There's no, there's no precision in that price action whatsoever. It's a mess. Now, real quick, pop quiz, guys. When you look at a chart that's a mess, even though you may be a pretty good technical analyst, are you increasing or decreasing your odds of success by trading a chart that looks like that. That's right. You're going to decrease your chances of success because we can't predict what comes next in a chart like that. And so when we look at charts like this, what we try to do oftentimes is read into there something that we want it to be, not what it really is. Okay, I want to look at the chart for what it really is. And I want to look for price patterns that are showing me good signs. Now I'm going to show you some, some weekly charts um, because I'm holding a lot of longer term trades right now. Um, well, not a lot, but I'm holding a number of longer term trades. This is 3M. And for those of you that aren't in RWO, we purchased 3M. I started buying 3M right here. Do you guys recognize my pattern? Now there's a key element here on this pattern that I think is important. I don't trade stocks 
that can't break down trends. Okay? I like to wait. I'm patient. Okay? Hi, uh, Jeff. Here's my settings. Um, let's see. Oops. That's not it. That's not it. I can't remember. Um, right here. There. Logarithmic percentage. Okay. So I want precision in the price action and I make the trade do what I want it to do. If it doesn't do what I want it to do, I usually don't trade it. So I don't trade stocks under resistance. And particularly if there is a downtrend resistance. Okay. Now, when I say under resistance, anytime we're in a trend, we have some overhead resistance normally that we have to deal with. But if I'm trading something, I don't want there to be a major resistance point in a chart. Okay. Everyone in RWO will tell you, I waited for this trade. In fact, I talked about this trade for probably two months. I was waiting for this trade. Since we've taken this trade, not a single point of heat on that trade has been taken. No heat. Just make money. Okay. We did the same thing with Altria. Same price pattern. This one was just trying to break its downtrend. Took it a little early right here. Right there. Still low risk entry into the trade. Look at what this trade has done. I just closed this today for $4,700 in profits. Okay. How many of you would like to take a single trade? And have the confidence that you're picking that trade with a low risk entry. And you're putting the odds in your favor for a win. Okay. Odds in a favor for a win. I didn't, I didn't buy contracts. I bought the stock. Okay. Bought the stock. And really, does it matter? Does it matter what I do or does it matter what you do? See, I know something to be true, guys. If you try to blindly follow me or blindly follow Rick or blindly follow any other trader, you're not going to probably have anywhere close to the same result. Don't blindly follow us for any particular reason. How many contracts, how many shares, doesn't matter. I made money. Okay? And I do this kind of trade repeatedly. All right? Now, people will ask me, okay, now, all right, why didn't you buy this down here? Can't you see? Can't you see this was bottoming? Why didn't you buy this here? Or why didn't you buy this here? Can't you see there's a higher low? Why didn't you buy this here? And I will tell you exactly why I don't do that. I'm still underneath the downtrend. I have every reason to believe, every reason to believe that when we pop up here, we reject at that downtrend. Okay, how many times do we have to fail at a downtrend before we believe that downtrend to be true? But I'm telling you guys, for a long, long time, I was the worst out there. I would try to pick bottoms all the time. I was constantly out here picking bottoms, constantly out here trying to predict when the market would turn. I quit doing that altogether. Either the stock is trending or it's not. I only trade trending stocks trending with the direction of the market. Okay? Simple. 
and I only trade a couple of different patterns within that trend. And I wait for those trades. Now, I'm always looking for those patterns setting up, coming to me. If I go to back to some daily charts, take a look at um, AEO. AEO is a chart that's setting up. Okay, now I don't even have my trend drawn on there very nicely. You can see I could tighten it up and clean that up just a little bit more. But what I'm looking for in this chart, first off, let's go back here. If the stock has lower highs, this is not likely going to be any trade for me until the downtrend breaks and we prove to hold. This is the beginning of an uptrend. So first off, I have to be patient for the trade. Okay. Secondly, I'm going to be looking for the concise price action trades. Ask anyone in RWO and you'll know that even though this trade was setting up here and this gap away, I would not be in that trade. I only buy stocks that show me buyers stepping up. I don't predict the buyers are going to come into the trade. They have to show me that they're coming into the trade before I enter the position. Okay, So I make them come to me. And I'm looking for the trade before it sets up before it sets up, before the trade happens. And that's why you guys see me, I'm always looking at charts, but I'm always looking at those charts in a different way. I'm looking for that trade right in here before it occurs. I'm looking for that possibility out of this consolidation where I can enter that trade. I'm looking for those nice, concise price patterns where I might be able to catch an entry. And if the trade is away from the trend, if I get a buy signal right here, folks in RWO probably get tired of me hearing, hearing me say this, that could be a buy signal. It could be an entry. Don't have any problem as long as you can hold your stop loss underneath here. And don't be surprised if this has to move over to the trend before it goes. You want an example of that? Take a look right here. There's the pop ahead of trend. And we still make our way back over here. We don't have to rush into trades, okay? And these price patterns are so important to these trades that I can show you just thousands of these price patterns. And by waiting for the trade, I don't get caught oftentimes in these ugly setups. Take a look at something like Visa. Visa pulling back today, and you, I can guarantee you there were a ton of people that anticipated that this was going to go higher here. And they bought that trade before there was any proof of buyers coming in. Okay, and they just got their head handed to them. Okay, if I see a chart like this setting up, I don't anticipate the entry. I look in here and say, you know, if I draw a line right across here someplace, that would be a pop above that. All of these candles kind of connect in there. A pop above that would be proof that buyers may come in. And I also notice when I set up that alert that this trade could bounce around in here for several days and it doesn't matter. I wait for that trade when it confirms that move. And I try to catch that early entry into the position. Okay. If you take 
if you take your time and look at a chart, you're gonna find trades have occurred all over the place. All over the place, but we didn't trade them because we didn't take the time to look at the chart. How many of you guys would agree that what you're doing most of the time during the day is racing around looking for that white candle? Or a green candle or whatever it is that you use. All day long, what's in that chase looking for that white candle? My opinion of that is that the trade, once that white candle occurs, you may have already missed the position. You may have missed the trade. Rarely do I go after trades like that that have already moved. I just wait for the next entry in the trade. You guys have heard me say this a lot, and I'm going to continue saying it. The thing that turned around my trading years ago was when I was ready to quit and I was looking at all of these charts that had these trends all around me. And I thought, how in the world could I be losing money when there's trends all around me? And it finally clicked that the easiest thing for me to do, and it, this is easy, and honestly, guys, I'm lazy when it, I, I want the easiest trade out there. It's why I don't try to speculate around bottoms. I don't try to do any of that stuff. I wait for a trade. Okay, and that is, there can be no easier way to make money in the market than just find a trending chart and wait for the next entry into the trade. And if you guys don't believe that, all you have to do is get rid of price action and put a chart up. Now this is a weekly, that's not fair. But look in here guys, could you make money with this chart? Not that hard, right? Really not that hard. Let me put this chart up. Could you make money with that chart? Let's go to the daily. Can you make money with that chart? So everywhere around us, there's trends. Now trends can be really sloppy. We know we've got some rather sloppy price action in the market, in the indexes right now. You can have wide price action, really whippy candles and things like that that make a chart untradeable. But if we just wait for our setup to come in a trade, we can trade charts. Now, I, I spent um, quite a bit of time the other day. We spent an entire two hour period just going through one chart in X. And we went through this chart one day at a time, step by step. And you know what's interesting, guys, is everyone that was in the class pretty much could pick out the entry signals of the trade. We went through and defined why we might take this, why we wouldn't take this, the risk of this trade, the volatility of that trade, the whole aspect of the trade. And you know what, guys? We took several trades as we walked through that chart and we won on every trade. No lie, who was in the class? We won on every trade that we picked. And the reason is, guys, is because we spent the time analyzing the chart, not just chasing a candle. We utilized those price patterns, and we really spent some time focusing on the chart. Now, isn't it true? How many people right now would admit that we spend too much of our day rushing trying to find a trade, and we don't actually take the time to look at the chart. 
Because if we're honest with ourselves, we've looked at great charts before and we've missed every trade in it, right? And the chart just keeps going up and up and up and we've missed all the trades because we're just rushing rather than waiting. Okay. Now people will tell me, come on, man, it's so boring. It's, it's so boring to set and wait for as long as you waited for that trade to occur. True. Boring. But it's profitable. I don't mind having to wait. Exactly right. Better bored than poor. That's right. I am by waiting, I put myself in control. You know, I asked a question in right way options a couple of weeks ago. How many of you feel like you're just spinning? You're spinning, you're always rushing, you're just spinning out of control. You never feel like you have any grasp on what's going on. It's just this this constant rush, it's this this this, this constant push to find that next trade but we're never taking the time to actually look at the chart. We're never taking the time to actually investigate what's going on in that price action. And if we did, I know for a fact that a lot, of, a lot more folks could be very successful in trading because honestly, when you trade a trend, it's not that hard. We just wait for the next entry. We wait for our setup to occur and then we buy the chart. Yeah, read the tea leaves. That's right. Take some time and look at the chart. And for me, I would rather trade less and make more than always feel like I'm rushed to make a trade. I got to hurry up, got to hurry up, got to hurry up, got to hurry up. We don't have to do that. Okay, and it doesn't even, you know, like I say, it doesn't have to be a weekly chart. Um, we're holding Ford in RWO. Um, we bought a Ford position um, some time ago in this trade. Um, that trade right now on Ford is up 23.59%. And it's because we waited for the trade. We were patient to wait for the trade. We're in KHC. Here's another entry into KHC that I've been announcing to everyone for some time now in the morning prep videos. But we're in KHC down here. Okay. We're in a very bullish position on this trade. Uh, very profitable on the trade. Let's see, we're at 22.42% on that trade. But it's because we're being patient and waiting for those trades to, to come to us and identifying those trades, those potential trades ahead of time, it puts us in command of our trading. Let me ask you guys, would you be more comfortable in setting up the trade before it occurs, like right over here, set an alert. This price action is forming. Set an alert. The current trade at that time, let me show you here, we had broken this down, broken this. We were holding this trend. We pushed above this support. We were resting in here set the alert, wait for the trade to come to you. And when you do that, you're going to find much more winning trades. And you're going to avoid oftentimes getting caught in that high risk trade because you actually have time to think about this and plan it just a little bit, okay? Is the risk of this trade acceptable? To enter those positions. 
Okay, so if we start utilizing price patterns a little bit more and we utilize trend a little bit more, well, what's that going to look like? And I'm just going to go over here. By the way, I'll, I'll show you this here. These are just paper trades that I've done um, in, the, in the room for um, Hitter and Candlesticks folks. I don't manage these trades. I don't micromanage them in any way, shape, or form. I don't even really pay attention to them. Can you guys see what's possible if we just settle down a little bit? Just settle down a little bit. Let the trade work. So what does that look like when, when I'm talking about trades? Let's take a look. If we have trades that um, we see a, a trend developing, maybe the stock was in a downtrend. We see the trend developing. Does it matter, guys? Does it matter if we hit the perfect entry here? I need to change my color. That might be hard for you guys to see. Um, we do this all, go through this exercise all the time in RWO, but does it matter if I catch this trade or if I catch this trade or if I catch this trade? It doesn't matter, does it? Because each one of these are winning opportunities. And all we're doing is following our rules and our trend. We want to see a stock trending with the direction of the market. We want to wait for them to engage their trend or support in some way. Okay, and we can trade one chart over and over and over and over in these trends. Um, let me show you an example of that. How many times could you trade KSS? and be a winner. Over and over, right? How many times can you trade UAA and be a winner? Lots, right? Lots and lots. So these trains are around us everywhere and it doesn't have to be retail. Look at over here. How many times can you trade this and these trends and make money? Now, I don't like airlines because of their volatility and the weirdness that's in there, but they're, they're profitable, right? Just find that trending chart and do some analysis. Wait for the trade. Now, there's some rules that you have to follow, okay? And they're really kind of simple. Um, if we're in a trend here and the stock shoots up like this, and then we get just a couple, three days of pullback in that trade, and a buy signal pops in there, should you buy that trade? Well, the RWO folks know that I won't. 99.9% .9 of the time, I won't. And the reason I won't is because it is too far from trend. And the high likelihood is that it may pop a day or two and then reverse and come right back down into its trend. Okay. Now, are there trades that do follow through that I'm going to miss? Yep. And do you think I care? Nope. I don't care because that's not my trade. One of the reasons I maintain such a high win-loss ratio, guys, is because I'm picky about the trades I take. Either they are or they are not a trade setup. A questionable trade setup is not a trade setup. Okay, it's a maybe. 
and it's not a maybe that I'm normally going to trade. Okay? I know what I do works because I've done it for so long. So I'm just going to keep doing that. Okay? So we have to be reasonable in these moves. When we see a stock that extends itself a long ways, we have to be worried about a potential pullback, right? And even though those buyers may step up, and I honestly tell you guys, I think this is an institutional thing. Institutions have figured this out, or high frequency trading firms has figured this out, that if they can pop a buy signal in there, a bunch of people will jump on it and then they can sell them out. They can skim money right out of the market doing it and because they're doing it so much anymore. So put yourself at the highest tactical advantage. Put yourself at the highest tactical advantage. Make them show you their hand. We're going to hold support. We're going to hold trend. And they're trying to step in. Okay, Buyers are coming up, trying to prove themselves. Even with this much effort, guys, I lose about 30% of my trades. Okay? But let me ask you this, guys. How many of you could make a pretty solid living winning about 70% of your trades? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out, right? I can take 30% or 30% of them as, as losers as long as I don't take too much risk on those trades and I can make a lot of money. So once again, it's not about the quantity of trades that I take. It's about the quality of trades. Would you guys agree? You can have tons of quantity and not make any money. But if we can improve the quality of trade, we may take fewer, but make more money. Okay, we may take fewer and make more money. Position. Okay, so we have to think about that price action and where those trends, where those price patterns, where those candlesticks patterns are being placed. You'll hear me <clears throat> talk about this every once in a while. Um, we'll get, folks will get real excited. We'll see a hammer pattern that forms, okay, forms in a chart. And oh my gosh, it's a hammer. Should we buy that? But the next price support in that chart is down here, and the trend is out here. This candlestick is not reacting to anything. It's just floating in thin air for me. A candlestick that forms out here, to me, has no bearing. It means nothing. Okay? It's not reacting to anything. And so I want to see that candle placed correctly or those price patterns placed correctly, okay? A price pattern like this on love, I don't even like this chart, but on love, breaking through that resistance and then proving the hold here, okay? Nice little consolidation, relatively tight. I can place an alert on that trade, say, if this connects with a trend out here someplace, and I don't know where that trend is yet, right? Because it hasn't established. But after several days of rest in here, if, if I place that alert, I put myself in the driver's seat on a low risk entry trade. My stop loss goes under here, and I don't have to worry about it much. And then trend is actually proven at that point. That's where trend begins. So I make the trade come to me. Look at the, what we've got right here in love right now. Our trend is kind of flattened out a little bit, right? We were going up pretty steep here, but now we've kind of flattened out just here a little bit. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Let's take a look. We pulled back and we're holding price support here, right? 
So we're trying to hold this slight trend. We're trying to hold price support. And we could actually see a couple more days out here of rest. So could we trade this trade rather than anticipating this? Could we trade this trade by simply placing a price alert across here and waiting for the entry to occur? Make the trade come to you. And by the way, you can plan this trade and say, oh, you know, my stop loss is down here um, underneath that tail. Um, this is either a yes trade or a no trade right off the bat. Because we can look at a wide price action scale like this right here, big volatility, and say even if the, that pops up there, there's no way I'm taking that trade because my risk is too high. Move on. Wait for the next entry into the trade. Avoid that position. Okay. Let's take a look at that MU. He says the MU is setting up nicely. Let's take a look. Oops, that's not MU. MU setting up nicely. I agree. MU could be setting up nicely. This little resting pullback in here that's going on right now, we could be contacting this little trend starting to, to move here. And I could probably take this trade. I couldn't take, here's a trade that I can't take. If I place a price alert here and the stock moves up to here, I cannot take that trade. There's too much risk to my stop loss. Okay, gaps away, moves up. I have to wait for the next entry. And here's the perfect example that it didn't hurt us at all by being patient and waiting for our trade. Okay? We didn't have to take the high risk trade. We didn't have to chase the big popping candles. That stock rests and pulls back and consolidates. Now I could potentially take an entry into this trade. And by the way, I don't necessarily have to take it today. Notice we still have that possibility that this could rest several more days out here. So I could just place an alert and say, prove to me that you can break through. I can decide whether or not the risk in this trade is acceptable before I even make the decision I want to go forward with this trade. Okay? That's why I don't do that. Because I know I might be able, instead of chasing this candle, I can get a better entry here. I take less risk here on that trade. I don't have to get caught up in the emotion on the chase. Does that make sense, guys? There's a good example right over here of what I was saying about taking that trade too early. We shoot up here in this move. We pull back, and you can see we have some opportunities for buying coming in here. And what did we do? We worked our way back to trend. There was the easy entry right there. You guys see that? There was the low risk entry, the nice little price consolidation move over to trend, holding on to support and reacting to trend. There was the trade. That's the easy trade, the higher probability trade. And by being patient and waiting for those price patterns to set up as they should, we'll make better trades more often. We don't have to always be in this um, rush. We don't have to always feel that, um, that huge weight of anticipation whether a trade is going to be a trade or not, or if I bought out here, is this going to work or not? Um, because we're going to have a higher number of winning trades if we wait. And if we set up the trades that fit us personally, 
And isn't it true, guys, if we start winning at a higher number of winning trades, that won't your confidence come up? You may trade less, but won't your confidence come up in your ability to get into the right trade? We don't have to have every trade, right? We don't need to trade every stock out there that's racing around. We need a few good quality charts. They're holding trend, respecting trend, support and resistance, and giving us buy signals. We can trade less and we can make more. Okay? And the cool thing is, guys, when your confidence goes up in your trades, you'll be able to take these trades and scale up as your confidence grows. Okay? The question was asked on, on uh, Mo, how many contracts did I trade? I bought 1,000 shares. Okay? Of the stock. A small trade for me nowadays is a 10 contract trade. But I didn't start there, guys. I started there with one and twos. But as my confidence grew and as my account grew, I can take the same trade setup and just scale up. Is there any difference here, guys? If you have, a, a, if you're brand new as a trader, you're trading a small account, is there any difference you take one contract here or five years later down the road, you're taking a 10 or 15 or 20 contract position there. It's the same trade, right? We just scale it up. Because if we're hitting at a high enough consistency rate in our trades, we can build that confidence to grow our accounts, okay? Now the other thing that I think is really, really key to my success in this is because I've specialized in so few of patterns, I'm not chasing around every pattern out there. I don't care. I really don't care. Because I've specialized so specifically in just a, a few things, you guys think I've gotten better at those few things over the years rather than trying to be the master of all the different things that are out there? Yeah, the more you focus into one area, the better you become at the read of that price action. Something I say all the time in the 3-8 trap class is that too often traders don't know who they are as a trader. They don't know where they are and they don't know where they're going. They have, they have dreams and an and anticipation of that they, they, they just want to make a lot of money. And I usually say, well, you know, everybody has that. That's, they call that a fantasy. Okay. We all have that desire to, to make more money. But how are we going to do that unless we know who we are as a trader and how we are going to get there? Right? I have specialized in how I get there. And it just works over and over and over and over. It's 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 not like I, I don't I don't I, I'm not one to go out there and promote um big returns and all of that kind of stuff. I, I don't like that. I've never have liked that. I think that's it's too easy to put smoke and mirrors in that thing. Because what I have done or the trade that I've done in the past has no bearing on what I can do next, right? I'm only as good as my next trade. Would you guys agree? All you got to do is look in your accounts. How many of you guys that had a winning streak, nice winning streak, made a lot of money, and then lost it all? Right? So isn't that proof enough that we are only as good as our next trade? What's happened in the past is the past. So now we have to focus on what is the next trade. And for me, the next trade is always going to be based upon my rules and my guidelines.
always. Because I keep doing the same thing over and over and over. My rules, my guidelines dictate my trading. My focus to the price action and the price patterns dictate my entries. And the entry and the risk that I take on the trade is the only thing I can control. I can't control anything else about the trade. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow just like you don't. Okay, I cannot control whether the stock is going to go up or go down, but I can control my entry and I control I can control how much risk I take on that trade. So if we can calm down a little bit, if we can focus a little bit more on the chart itself, the price pattern of the chart, can you guys see how this would improve your trading? And you know, for me, I found a lot of comfort in that. When I started turning my trading around, the comfort was I don't have to be any kind of superstar trader. I don't have to be the smartest guy in the room with every indicator and, and everything out there. I could enjoy my trading more because I specialized into a specific set of rules that guide my trading. And so I enjoyed my trading more. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah, you can relax. There's always going to be tension and work of some kind, but you don't have to feel that constant, that constant, constant shove. Okay. Okay, let's take a look at this chart of well. Question was asked. Let's take a quick look at this. First impression when I look at this chart. Does anyone think that this chart is rel relatively volatile? Not saying it's a bad chart. I'm saying there may be a better choice out there. It's got a lot of whipping around in it. A lot of wicks and tails. Not really concise. Okay, so let's just draw it out. This is important. See the chart for what it is, not for what you want it to be. Okay, so let's draw it out and see if we can make some sense out of it. Well, first off, if I draw trend up through here, I've got a pretty decent trend, right? We're trying to hold in that trend, trying to hang on in that price pattern. But I have a problem here as well. What happened here? Broke support, didn't it? We broke through this resistance because of this big volatile move that we had here. We broke through that resistance, but we couldn't hold it. We pushed back for a possible fail. Now this could still be a buy entry or a buy entry coming. But the rule for me is any time a stock has broken its support, it's required to recover it and prove to hold it before I enter it. Does that make sense? Resistance has to become support and get proof that it's going to hold before I trade it. Okay. So can you trade this? You certainly could. Would I trade it? Probably wouldn't. Okay. This could be a buy signal for you. If this is the, the kind of charts that you like to trade and, and you develop that track record of winning on these charts, absolutely trade it because we are holding trend. I'm just telling you probably wouldn't be my trade. That doesn't mean anything if this works for you. Okay.
BHC might work. BHC is getting a nice resting pullback. Okay, notice that the price action in here gets smaller and smaller. The volatility that was created right over here in these whippy candles is diminishing. We're getting smaller and smaller. Now I can't tell you if this is going to go up or down. Would you guys look at this chart and say this has a potential to go either direction? Do you agree? Overall, the trend has been bullish. So I would have to say I'm going to lean to the bullish side. But this has the potential to go either way. So I don't want to anticipate the entry here. What I'd want to do is look at this price action in here and determine where I want to set a price alert. I might choose, if I have enough risk tolerance, I might choose to set my alert up here. If I'm rather confident in the trade, maybe I tighten it up a little bit. Maybe I move it down some in that trade, trying to catch that little closer entry into the trade. But I wait for that trade to trigger. I wait for that trade to prove to me that those buyers are going to step up here and pick that trade up. Here's the other thing that um, guys see me do all the time in RWO. Notice that in here, this was our trend. We've lost our trend right now, right? So we're out here kind of searching for a trend. Okay, just look, kind of look at it like we're wandering around in the woods and the stock is, they got their flashlights out and they're looking for the path. Okay, where's the path? We lost the path. We don't know where the path is. We're looking around. Where's the path? Okay, so I really don't have a trend here, right? We lost the path. Overall, the stock is bullish, so I'm leaning to this. Now, what do you think the chances are that we could continue to wander in the woods here for a while? There's nothing that says that we have to go tomorrow, right? So, I wouldn't be at all surprised if this price action in here, see how these last three candles have gotten even tighter? I wouldn't be at all surprised if we get several more in here and we could move our alert down into here. So we have to be patient, right? Look at that price action for what it is, not for what you want it to be. We're looking for the path. The overall trend of the market is up. The overall trend of this stock is up. I favor the upside. I'm going to be looking for that upside move, but I'm willing to wait for it. Doll, I don't know. Um, oh, you're asking me to look at UNH. Gotcha. All right. Let's take a look at GM. What do you guys like about this chart? What don't you like about this chart? I look at this chart and there's not a lot here I, that I don't like. Okay, I have a chart that's trending. True, we don't really have a big strong upside trend here. Okay, but the way I see this chart is it's trying to find its way. This chart may rest all the way over here to trend. Every day that this stays within this range, the better this chart gets to me. Seriously, every day it stays in there, the better it gets to me. Same thing right here, where we try to move early in the move and then we continue to come back to find trend. Okay, so over in here, the longer we waited, the better this trade got. Okay. So wait for it. I like the chart. Could you have bought it the other day? Yes, right here. This buy signal could have been a buy signal. Okay? You could own it. Here's the, here's the caveat to that. If you buy it away from the trend, 
you must be willing and plan the trade with enough time. Set your stop and know that there's a chance that this could move all the way over here. This is a mistake that a lot of option traders will make. They won't buy enough time. They think that just because they saw that white candle, this has to necessarily just go like that. And we know that's not true. Okay, so if we're honest with the way the chart looks, we can go ahead and buy that candle, but we have to be prepared to wait. Does that make sense? We have to be prepared to wait for that trade to get moving. So make sure you plan that with enough time. All right, now here's the other thing that I think is important on this. The person who bought it on this day, are they wrong? No, they're not wrong, as long as they can take that much risk in the trade. Okay, but let me ask you this. If this rests over here in a nice, tight, tight concise pattern, if we're wait for that trade, could the person that catches that trade here actually get a lower risk entry on the position? Yes entirely possible they can get a lower risk entry trade by being patient and waiting for it. Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully. Um, Dahl wants me to look at UNH. Look at a couple more here and then we'll call this a class. But UNH, very bullish, certainly bullish here. Um, the problem I have with UNH right now is we're right here at price resistance. Okay. That would not be a buy for me. Um, we have rejected this price up here twice before. There's nothing that says, and the fact that we're away from this trend, nothing that says that we can't reject it again. Okay, so UNH is not a buy for me, but is a good chart. So what I mean by that is I would wait for the entry in this trade. So for example, I want to see this trade. Go ahead and pop out. That's fine with me. And then I'll wait for that next entry into the trade. If it doesn't pop out, I'll say go ahead and do what you got to do here. We have to consolidate here and move over to the trend. I'll wait for that trade to pop through. If I have to wait for this to rest and pull back, I can wait for that too. Okay, And here's something that people always forget about. And I'm telling you, this, this was, I used to kick myself over this so many times because I would rush to this trade thinking, oh my gosh, if I don't hurry up and buy this, I'm going to miss out, right? And then I'd buy that trade and I, I would have to wait. And over here, someplace that trade would go. And if I would have just waited for the trade, I would have taken less risk on the position and wouldn't have had to have held this trade through all of this choppiness, waiting for it to engage its trend. Make sense? Uh, oh, so Stu was asking Barry a question. Yeah, um, I think Stu knows that I, I trade both um, long-term charts and short-term charts. Um, Tom, uh, do I consider convergence of moving averages such as GM? I really... I, I really don't. Um, um, I use the 3 8 trap and pretty much the 3 8 trap. Okay. So, three, three moving back toward the eight within a trend. Okay. But more important to me than anything, the averages are great to help me see 
but it has the trade has nothing to do with the averages. Not nothing, none whatsoever. The trade has to do with what the price is doing. Does that make sense, Tom? You know, it took me a long time to figure this out too, but moving averages and indicators don't pay me. When price moves, price pays me. So while I can use the indicators to help me visualize where the trade is, if I over focus on the moving averages and I don't focus on the trend and the price support, those moving averages can fail me, right? Because there's nothing in here that says, just because they compressed at this point, that this can't push back down to this trend. So I wait or I set up that trade based on the price action, not the moving averages. I hope that helps. Let's, um, no, moving averages are not equal weight to the trend. Nope. Price action of trend is more important than any average to me. Price, support, resistance are more important than any indicator to me at all. At all. Um, we'll take a look at Schwab and we'll call it, call it an afternoon. Um, Schwab, what do you guys think of this chart? Stu's been studying. <laughs> Stu's been studying. Beautiful trend. Holding price support. Buyers starting to set up. Now, Stu can have has a decision to make. Should I buy it here? Is that a bullish enough candle to confirm this? Should I buy it here? Or do I set a price alert and say, let's wait till Monday, see if it follows through? That's his only decision. Well, his decision point of my stop loss is under here. Can I handle that risk? That's a chart that's hitting on all cylinders. That's a chart that's showing us good support, good trend, good, uh, you know, everything about that chart. Now there's one other thing that we should look at. We should make sure that there's nothing out here blocking our path to the upside. And there's not. Beautiful chart, Stu. Yes, um, and I think what you're saying there, Vitaly, is if the market is is predominantly trending to to the upside, then yes, I would look at the overall market to help support those charts to hold their trends and continue to move higher. Yes, if that's what you're asking, because you guys have heard the old saying, like a rising tide lifts all ships, right? It's so much easier to trade long the market when the market is long than it is to try and predict the turn when the market is down. Okay. And besides Stu saying, hey, it's Friday, probably not going to take this trade, I'll bet if you press Stu a little bit, he'd also tell you, market's a little bit crummy here today, and if I wait till Monday, I can see if we can actually pick up off of this bottom and follow follow through. Because we have that risk right now, currently in the market, right? We sold off hard. We've rallied back to price resistance. Couldn't we have Monday another sell-off?
So rather than anticipating that, maybe waiting for that train is a wise thing. Hit me, Joe. One thing that I think will help you guys is just use the Trendinator. I, I, I think Rick calls it the Trendicator. I call it the Trendinator. Um, I, it's, it's more of an Arnold Schwarzenegger thing for me, I guess. <laughs> um, it's showing me trend. Um, so I'm a, you know, anytime the stock holds above at 17, and that's basically what that is, a 17 EMA, I'm going to have confidence in the trend. And we can, we can, the reason I'm answering this this way is somebody mentioned it's, it's broken the trend line. Um, you know, we can, we can overanalyze our, our drawings too, can't we? We can get a little bit carried away with our drawings that it has to, that we're precise. The market has to be as precise as we are, but we all know the market's not all that precise. We get this fluctuation and stuff in it. So when the 17 EMA stays green, I want to stay with that. Okay. Uh, Joe, take a look at Bloomin. Bloomin. How would I draw the trend line on this? Well, whoops. That's not the right chart. Um, off of these lows, I think is probably where I would draw. Now, you could certainly, um, you could certainly make a case for tightening up off of this. Okay, so um, I'd probably go in here for now. I've got three strong touches right there. But like I say, you could make a case and, and you'd be just as right as anything going tight to that. Um, this is a beautiful breakout chart. Yeah, um, beautiful breakout. So um, after breaking that major resistance, this could, and there's, you know, continue to rest. Um, I would have no problem at all if you chose to tighten this up here and want to take this entry right in here and I'd have no problem with that the only thing I would tell you is just to make sure that and you take that trade if this has to rest over to here make sure you plan enough time okay and I always like to look back at a chart and say does does a stock have that ability has it done it before rest that long because we always like to think we see the candle and it has to move right at this point. But I think we can see pretty clearly here that this stock has that capacity. It, it doesn't mind consolidating for a longer period of time. So it's just not out of the question that that could occur. So just plan your trade um, accordingly. If you want to buy that trade and there would be no reason why you couldn't. Okay. Buy that trade, just make sure you plan enough time and be willing to hold if this does have to do that little rest out here. Okay. But I'm not telling you my trend drawing is any better than yours. Um, everyone sees a chart a little bit differently. Um, you, may be, you may be right on on this trade, tr tr drawing it tight. Okay, so, um, you know, just plan, plan your trade. And here's the other thing to, you know, to note in here, you know, we're all trying to look for assurance that this is going to be a winning trade, right? But do we ever know that? We look for confirmation from someone else or whatever that our analysis here is correct. 
But the only thing we can really do is say, hey, I'm willing to accept the risk of this trade if this stops out. It's not on you, Joe, okay? It's, we take it personally, but it's not. So when that occurs, just take the loss and say, hey, now just wait for the next entry into the trade, right? It's, it's not personal, but we kind of take it that way. And, and I understand that feeling because I used to take it personal um, as well. But, you know, we, we make the best decision we can based on our analysis of the chart. If we're wrong, we're wrong. It's, it's not like the market cares, um, you know, and we shouldn't be trying to fight the market to prove that we're right. Just, just be wrong and then wait for the next entry, All right? And when you're taking those low risk entries, if you lose on those from time to time, it's not a big deal, right? So plan your trades, wait for the setup, wait for the trade, and you're gonna see an improvement in your, in your trading. These price patterns matter and their placement matters. So I hope you got that out of this, um, you know, e-learning class today that that made some sense to you. And you can imply some of that and actually work on specializing into your patterns. Specialize into your patterns. Um, <laughs> yeah, make it your Kung Fu, your Kung Fu. <laughs> the right Kung Fu. Okay. Awesome, guys. Thanks so much, I appreciate it. Hopefully um, you can take that and really make something out of it. I know it, it, it just makes a world of difference for me um, to be able to take these trades that really aren't all that stressful and um, just keep doing them over and over and over. So, all right guys, have a great afternoon. Thank you.